Press Network. My name is Uh, Maria, I think you need to be unmuted. Oh, we are all creative people and we love stories. We love a good performance and we love putting those things together and bringing them to the people who want to have them in their ears. Um, as you can imagine, so much has changed with the audiobook industry since 2020 and COVID-19 and the lockdowns changed all of our habits. It was an already growing market, but the changes in the way that we live, as well as concurrent technologies that were happening at the same time have led to such a huge expansion in the awareness of audiobooks. Um, you've seen growth in people being aware of audiobooks, in engaging with audiobooks and just building them into the habits that make them part of their daily routines. So I wanted to talk to you today about some of the facts and figures around the audiobook industry and how those impact what we do at Audiobooks Radio. And if you like to dig into these kinds of things like I do, I'm going to put a slide at the end with some of the resources that I've looked at in case you want to look at them further as well. to be worth a little over 5 billion US dollars, which is the equivalent of about 7.5 billion Australian dollars. That's a doubling since 2017. Staggeringly, there's a projected compound annual growth rate projected of 26.4% over the next five years. That would bring audio, the audiobook global market to around $35 billion by 2030. This huge growth is driven primarily by increased listenership, particularly with young people, and technological advances, uh, especially portable devices, smart home devices, and increasing internet connectivity around the world. If you listen to audiobooks, where do you listen to them? The US-based Audio Publishers Association reported that 55% of audiobook listeners are listening at home, 30% are listening in their car. This may bear out your own experience. I spoke to a CEO of a major Australian company who told me he reads 100 books a year. And when he was asked how he has the time to read that much on top of everything else he does, it turns out he means he's primarily listening to 100 books a year. And his wife says he's even listening while he's brushing his teeth. Uh, and uh, I also spoke to recently somebody who told me that their brother is a long haul trucker and he discovered audiobooks and he loves them for his long drives. So you can see the potential listenership, uh, especially as people get more comfortable with new technologies, is really endless. It might surprise you to know that in 2021, 56% of audiobook listeners were under the age of 45. And according to Nielsen's recent Australian survey, 37% of audiobook listeners say they started listening in the past 12 months. And then you also have a whole huge population of long engaged older audiobook listeners who've been listening for a very long time and are at the same time getting increasingly familiar with new technologies and they're loving the ability that they have to expand their audiobook listening. Back when a lot of these older audiobook listeners started, and uh, I remember it well, audiobooks were these big uh, cases of CDs in crackly cases in a corner of the library. Um, in fact, now these days, most libraries have drastically reduced or even ceased purchasing new physical audiobooks in the CD format. Uh, meanwhile, they are spending a lot more money on their digital collections, including audiobooks.
since the pandemic began, children have become a hugely important segment of the audiobook market. That 2021 APA survey found that parents reported that 61% of children, those under 17, had listened to an audiobook. That was up from 40% in 2020. This is clearly a lockdown habit that even if it has reached its peak, we have every reason to believe that it's here to stay. The kids' audiobook segment of the market is expected to grow even faster than the general market, with an expected compound annual growth rate of 29% heading into 2030. Personally, I hang out in a lot of parenting Facebook groups, and an incredibly frequent question, especially around the school holidays, is the request for audiobooks that the whole family can enjoy on a road trip. They always want a good story with an engaging narrator. And they always say they listen to Stephen Fry read Harry Potter, and now they love to hear a great narrator. It's true that an excellent narrator is an important part of many people's audiobook listening experience. It's reported that the two main factors that audiobook listeners look at when they're deciding what to listen to is the price. Um, and audiobooks can vary greatly in price and Australian consumers are very sensitive to that. And also a good narrator. That APA study that I quoted earlier said that listeners prefer a professional narrator over author read books. An interesting point of fact for the publishing industry is that the rise of audiobooks doesn't seem to be happening at the expense of print books. Rather, we are seeing the podcast and the audiobook industries growing together and they're increasing alternatives to radio listening. Since 2017, the overall amount of time people have spent listening to audio products has grown 106%. So really, we in audiobooks are competing for people's listening time rather than the time and resources that they're allocating to sitting down with a print book. Finally, it's worth mentioning that the key players in the audiobook industry are really still working out the best way to capture consumer dollars in this growing industry. On one hand, you have Amazon with Audible, which is a subscription model and, of course, the biggest player in the industry. And on the other hand, you have Spotify, who just announced that they're going to be entering the industry and they're going to be using a pay per download model rather than a subscription, which has caused a lot of chatter in the industry. At Audiobooks Radio, we work with eBook Alchemy to distribute our author's books to currently 15 different platforms. So really, just time will tell which model is going to win out. Um, I'd say watch this space. It's going to be an interesting story. Great. So that was Christian um, and uh, I love, right from the very beginning, we have definitely kept an eye on the whole global landscape. Like, where is it that audiobooks are going? Uh, and in the meantime, uh, you know, we are just refining our model all the time. Um, now, I would like to introduce Loretta Jessup. Loretta and I have been working very closely, uh, particularly in the last um, <laughs> month and a half, two months, on a, a very complex project. And she will give you an idea of the backend systems that go into audiobook production from our point of view in any case. Loretta, over to you. 